Hello and welcome to Season 8, Episode 42 of the Ubuntu Podcast. In this, the last show of the season, we're going to deliver our predictions for 2016 and look back over what we got wrong in 2015. Uh, we'll also have some command line love and we'll go over your feedback, of course. I'm Laura and joining me this week are Alan. Hello, hello. Mark. Hiya. And Martin. Hiya. Hello. So what have you been up to since we last met, Alan? I have installed Fedora 23 and Tergos, OpenSUSE Leap and Debian Jesse. What, Ubuntu not working wow. for you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. I'm switching to Fedora 23 and Tergos, OpenSUSE Leap and Debian Jesse. No, I, uh, I wanted to do some testing of some stuff. So I partitioned up a hard drive and um, I've put all those distros on it because i wanted to test some ubuntu related and stuff did the stuff work all of them no i haven't finished i only did the installs i haven't um, actually done the bit to test the stuff but i wanted to get the machines prepped so i could just test it so that was fun it was interesting seeing the installers and how they slightly differ and how yeah they're either better or worse than the ubuntu installer depending upon your point of view so yeah it was good cool awesome mark what about you uh, i went go-karting for our work Christmas do, me and my team decided that we weren't <laughs> going to go for a meal. We were going to go go karting, and it was jolly good fun. Like and good I came second yes. last. Oh. Although I should stress, it definitely wasn't a race. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the taking part that counts, isn't it, Mark? Yes. Yeah. Is that is, is that the mantra you consoled yourself with? Well, it was it was the walked. first time I'd been go karting as an adult. So, um... <laughs> oh, the way you were talking, I thought you were at school with eight year olds. <laughs> <laughs> So that was fun. <laughs> so, Martu, um, what have you been up to? I formalized the Ubuntu Pie Flavor Maker project that I talked about at Og Camp and then in uh, the Ubuntu Online Summit in November. Uh, so by the time you listen to this podcast, the recorded version, not the live version, uh, that'll all be announced and you should be able to get mm, three or four Ubuntu flavors for the Raspberry Pi 2. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I've got a new monitor. Cool. Yeah, quad H. Is it high DPI? N no, I don't think so. Um, I can see it with my glasses, so I don't think it's high DPI. My understanding of high DPI means that I would not be able to see it uh, as an <laughs> old man definition. wearing glasses. Yes. Uh, no, it's a 27 inch quad HD screen and it's fabulous. So I don't How have to do anything. How many pixels is that? Uh, lots. It's the equivalent of four 720p um, screens. Right. So four of my laptops. Yeah. Stuck quad together, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so when I tile the four things we look, use for this podcast, they're all in effectively a, a 720p quadrant of the screen. It's um, it's glorious. I love it. And my productivity is bound to soar. <laughs> so what's of the course. physical size of the screen? It's 27 inch. 27. Yep. Mm. What about you, Laura? What have you been up to? Uh, I spoke at Thing Monk about my kettle. What's Thing Monk? Uh, Internet of Things conference in London. Right. And I spoke at London Java Conference, no, London Java Community Open Unconference in London about community. Um, and then I went on holiday. This is this is why I've not been around for the last couple of shows. Oh, were you not here? <laughs> Outrage. <laughs> did you go to go? Australia? I went to San Francisco. That's not Australia. And, of course, I did the park run there. Oh, good for you. And because that's the most westerly in terms of time zones um, park run, and because I was walking because the machines still aren't better, um, I was actually the very, very last park runner in the world to cross the line that Saturday. Ah. Which I think is kind of cool. <laughs> is there not one in Hawaii? Is that not further west? Nope. Well, it is, but there isn't one. Yeah. I have to challenge someone in Hawaii to make one just to yep. get, break that. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> right. So shall we I get know. on with it? It's a bumper fun pack show. <laughs> yes. Let's. <laughs> Okay, as this is the last show of the year, there's a couple of things we have to do. One is this. <laughs> and... That was horribly disturbing. <laughs> uh, what was that? Uh, is Samantha uh, okay? Uh, yeah, she's got a bit of a sore throat. <laughs> Sounds like she needs, some, <laughs> needs to gargle or something. 
Yeah, I, I'm sure we'll get her fixed for later. Uh, so uh, every year we um, make predictions about what's going to happen in the coming year and then uh, and also look back upon the predictions from the previous year. So uh, as we are creatures of habit, let's do that again. Uh, okay. So last year um, we had some predictions. Uh, mm. Obviously, Martin wasn't here last year because he only started this season, but Tony was here last season. Yep. And Tony's first prediction was that he would not be in the show in 2015. <laughs> some insider information there, I think. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, was right. That was his bombshell. To, well, to his credit, have have we used any of? Didn't we, we did, right at the start of the season use his? Yeah, I think we forgot stings. that that the get in touch jingle was him, and so we <laughs> we used him a couple of times. But we also right. forgot that it was absolutely in, inaccurate information in them because we changed the domain name. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. yes. that. So Tony is both wrong and wrong. So no, <laughs> Tony is. <incorrect. laughs> uh, Alan, what did you say then? No, no, Laura's next. Oh, Laura's next. Uh, yes, Laura said uh, VMware will buy Docker, apparently. Mm. And they did. Oh. Dell bought EMC and VMware, so no. Right. Um, but doesn't rule out the possibility. Uh, what, that VMware will buy Docker before the end of the month? Yeah, you've got seven mm. days. I'm holding out. Mm. Uh, I will be so smug if they do. <laughs> <laughs> In March. <laughs> Uh, Mark said a desktop distro that uses containers instead of package manager. Well, um, there's the Ubuntu converged desktop, I suppose. No, this didn't really happen. Not in a big way. No, I, I think I could see why, you know, you thought it would and, you know, uh, but no. Uh, you also said Steam will launch on a mobile platform. Mm. That no, I mean there's a Steam app. Yeah, but that's that's <laughs> that isn't that I did specifically say I meant that they'd be selling games for a mobile platform, and that didn't happen. There has been talk of people making mobile Steam OS devices, but again, I've not really seen anything uh, concrete about that. So uh, I think I probably failed on that count as well. Yeah, it's a shame. There is actually a Kickstarter for a mobile Steam device. Um, but yeah, that won't happen for another five years because it's a Kickstarter. Mm. Um, <laughs> I've got to uh, ship it. <laughs> apparently, I said I had a few, um, but I got them all right, so we don't need to. Uh, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay. So I said rather vaguely encryption will be big, which um, I think, mm, well, we've got Let's Encrypt. Yeah. So. Can I have that one? I think you can have that one. Also, there has been a lot of noise around encryption. You know, lots of people. I mean, it, it, yes. it's not all been good, but it has been big. There have been lots of... Right. It's become a... Yeah. Sorry. No, no, carry on. A bit more mainstream. Yes. Yeah. yeah. People are more aware of what it is. I think that's is. what I meant. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's what I meant. I think that's uh, what you meant. <laughs> I said Amazon would buy Canonical. Uh, nope. Oh, dear. Still got days left. It's not yep. the end of the year yet. Yes. I thought, I thought that would be announced the same day that Dell buys Docker. Yes. Um, I said Ubuntu will switch away from Firefox, which hasn't nope. happened. And I also said Ubuntu will switch to be a rolling desktop release, which also <laughs> has yet to happen. Oh, well. What would that be defined as? Uh, so you would install it once and then you just constantly get updates and you wouldn't have to do a six monthly or two yearly massive uh, upgrade. You just constantly get updates all the time, hmm. um, which, you know, I get on my phone, but I did say desktop and not phone. So, yeah. so a massive fail. Martin hmm. wasn't around last year, but he did make some predictions on his own mumble server at home. Yes, he did. <laughs> he was preparing. Yeah. To be on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was practicing. I was, I was, you know, practicing to be a super sub at that point, yeah. So you said converged devices a la Canonical's definition. So our definition of what a converged mm -hmm. device might be will drive the next generation of mobile specs with regard to CPU, GPU, RAM and storage. I think I was maybe a year early with that prediction. So you think it's <laughs> going to happen next? Well, we'll come, we'll come to what you think is going to happen yeah. next. We'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, save yeah. it for the show. Uh, oh, uh and you also said VR will continue to lack adoption yep. uh, in the same way that you think 3D is rubbish. Yeah. 
And, as in virtual reality. Uh, yeah, yeah, VR, yeah. VR virtual, virtual reality, virtual. as in, you know, there, there, there won't be any new devices. It won't be a big thing. Nobody's going to be rushing out to the stores at Christmas this year to buy the VR headset for their new shiny games console. And I think I'm kind of right. There's not been any big stories yeah. about VR this year other than Facebook have kind of, well, is it Oculus have sort of dropped the mm-hmm. open source angle. So, yeah, VR continues to lack adoption. I think I get a tick in the box well, for that are... one, don't I? There, there are more devices than there were this time last year. So it's not just mm. like, it's not just mm. two devices. Most of them are made out of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's there's also not... the Samsung ones that are made out of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Only work um, with Samsung smartphones. Right. But so, yeah, now we'll you're being you picky. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they still don't have much adoption have and there's not much useful mm-hmm. stuff to do with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you also said a major cloud service and specifically said Twitter, Facebook, Google, Dropbox, eBay, Amazon, yep. will suffer a significant privacy or security breach that will change precisely nothing for average users. Mm. Um, so you kind of got it right in the stuff got hacked. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a given, isn't it? There will be stuff hacked. On, on a scale. Um, but there were some big yeah, ones. There were some there? big ones, yeah. So in February, we had Anthem, who were... Uh, a health insurer in the US who lost n- nearly 80 million records, which included just about everything that constitutes your identity, including your social security numbers. In June, we had uh, the Office of Personal Management and US Government Department uh, lost another 4 million records for current and former federal employees. In July, the uh, Ashley Madison website, uh, in dating in air quotes dating website had a breach of 37 million users and in october we had talk talk in the uk a data breach of uh, four million customers so those just those four there are many others just those four was 125 million people out of the 3.17 billion people connected to the internet so that's nearly four percent of the internet population had their had their accounts um, hacked or pilfered in some regard and yet the most recent one that we've just heard of today was the european space agency (laughs) uh hacked into and uh so you know those some of those ones that you're talking about there date back months and months right back to the beginning of the year and even the most recent one people still had three letter passwords Mm, mm. at the european space (laughs) what's the password (laughs) esa (laughs) <laughs> who can tell i haven't personally looked at the uh the dump yeah but, you know you can and uh, i'll include uh, a link in the show notes to a nice little online uh info interactive infographic to see who has uh leaked your data and to what degree uh it's a fantastic <laughs> little toy to play with nice uh, and there's something here about uh, you predicted that Ubuntu would go rolling, or that it wouldn't. I, I was okay. I was saying that it wouldn't go rolling. In fact, I said I would wear my pants on my head if Ubuntu goes to a rolling release model. So I think we're all pretty thankful that uh, Ubuntu yes. didn't go rolling. Yes, yeah. uh, there were a couple of predictions from the community. Paul said Ubuntu will go into partnership with a cloud provider if they haven't already, as an outsourced partnered version of the old Ubuntu One. No. But they did open source Ubuntu one. Mm. We did, yes, uh, but it wasn't any kind of. It wasn't like it didn't move forward, yeah. like accelerated very quickly, or with any partners that I'm aware of. Um, and the second one he had was that there will be a major or significant security problem in Android that affects a significant proportion of Android devices out there, except maybe the latest bleeding edge Google phones. And people will lament the fact that no manufacturers support updates. Paul I think speaks I the that truth. A couple of times, didn't it? Yes. Yes. I think that's spot on. Absolutely. So Paul, well done. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the most accurate out of all of the predictions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, specifically accurate. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So uh, those were our predictions for 2015. Let's move on to uh, next year. What do we What do we think is going to happen next year? Let's start with uh, Laura, shall we? What do you reckon for next year? Uh, I think that 3D printing will get more accessible and mainstream. Ooh. Define mainstream. Is there some kind of tangible, measurable thing we can say, like they'll be available in Argos or they'll come free with a, you know, package? <laughs> On the front of a magazine. Yeah. Oh, I don't know yet to justify it. <laughs> well, it's already, it's already fairly <laughs> mainstream. Most people now know what 3D printing is, at least. Yes. 
I think that I think it's more that that will just continue to be the case, and there will be more interesting application, more sort of, yeah, more useful applications of right. it. Mm. On on the point of people understanding what 3D printing is, can I just say most people in my family have listened to the episode where Laura describes her adventures with 3D printing in order for me to explain to them what 3D printing is. It's been an ongoing conversation for years I've been having with my family and now they understand it. So thank you for that. Oh, brilliant. Cool. Uh, What else? Any others, Laura, that you have for next year? Um, I had a couple for Internet of Things things because obviously that was in my mind recently. Um, One being quite vaguely that there'll be more kind of development in terms of the sort of infrastructure scaling and security side of it, the kind of the back end stuff as opposed to the front end funky uses and sensors that people tend to focus on, I think. Right. Um, And that's based on um, Matt Biddle from Doppler or was Doppler. Um, spoke at Thing Monk, and he was talking about how basically um, inter- for Internet of Things to work, we need to go back to seventies computing, a sort of distributed computing, yep. and um, so sort of all the things that involved, which I can't okay. remember off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, any others? Um, and on the IRT thing, that privacy issues will become more prominent as a thing to be aware of. We've mm-hmm. seen quite a few failures of privacy where people, the manufacturers just haven't understood that they need to actually take that into account. Mm. Um, and I think they'll get a little bit more user-centered focus on privacy, I think. It'd be interesting to see how uh, these IoT devices are updated. Uh, I was pointing to a thread recently where there's a fridge, a Samsung fridge that's been broken for two years because Google changed their APIs <laughs> and so nobody could look at their calendar on their fridge and people have been lamenting on this wow. this thread on Google Groups for years and years and the Samsung engineers don't seem to be interested in fixing it and neither do Google. It's it's quite an interesting you know challenge for those kind of connected devices that have embedded software that mm. need to be maintained. Mm. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, Mark? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, a bit of a hark back in... Uh, in 2013, I think, I I predicted that um, by the end of that, uh, by, the end, by the end of the following year, no, uh, none of the top five distros on DistroWatch at the time, which was, um, I think it was Mint, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and Magia. Magia. Um, mm-hmm. I said that none of them would have uh, switched to Wayland or um, Mir, as their default display server. And I believe I've been right again uh, with that one this year, that there's still none of those have switched. What I'm now saying for the following year uh, is that one of the top five will switch. So the top five as it stands at the moment, which is Ubuntu, Mint, Debian, OpenSUSE, and Fedora. One of them will switch to either Wayland or Mir as the default display server. You're making a prediction for something that's already happened. Am I? Hmm. Why? Which one of those has it? It's already in Fedora. It, uh, it's, it's in it's Fedora. Happened. It's not the default desktop display server. No, they've already said no, they're going to. No, it's definitely it's in Rawhide. They've said it they're will. going to. They haven't done it, though. Mind you, and, oh, well. And, <laughs> her, and furthermore, I haven't yet finished my prediction. <laughs> okay. tear it down. One of the top five will switch to either Wayland or Mir as the default. And mm-hmm. it won't be real re- well received due to missing features that people are used to in X and poor driver support and things like that. Mm. Like okay. that last part. Uh, any others? Um, I think the first release, uh, sorry, the release of Ubuntu's first converged to device will happen and it will be accompanied by significant mainstream marketing and media coverage. So not just the the tech news sites and tech blogs, which we're used to seeing like Ubuntu devices discussed on, but you know, mainstream media, which discuss things other than tech news. Mm. And I can see okay. that Seth in the chat room, or rather the Telegram group, is actually raising Mark's ante, saying he thinks two of the five top distros will switch. So you're on the record, Seth. This time <laughs> next year, we'll find out whether you're right or not. Uh, and I have uh, a final yeah, prediction. Um, I think yeah. that um, a big game publisher with uh, its own digital distribution platform that isn't Steam... So I'm thinking of something like Blizzard, which has Battle.net, or EA that has Origin, will release a Linux version of its client software. So we'll have another major 
commercial uh, digital distribution platform on Linux. Okay, this this is interesting because uh, I just like to point out in 2013 you said a AAA game type will be released simultaneously cross platform, including Linux. <laughs> yes, perhaps something made by Valve. So there's a theme here. I like that. Also, briefly, I'll point out that in 2013 you said the Amazon search yes. will be removed from the Dash Home Linux, <laughs> and it's finally by happening. Default, still available as its own lens or opt in. RMS still won't be happy. Well, yes, I can't speak for <laughs> RMS, exactly. but if you listen to our last show, that is going to be happening. Yes. Yeah. But it's not happened yet, so that doesn't count, apparently. It has. It landed today. No. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Last oh, week. Dear. It landed last That's week. That's all for me. Sorry, last week, yes. Uh, Martin, go for it. Okay. Um, this is my accumulator prediction. Vulcan <laughs> will be finalized and released. Linux drivers for Vulkan will be released for Intel IGPs as open source, for NVIDIA via proprietary drivers and AMD via proprietary drivers. SteamOS will include Vulkan support, and on equivalent hardware, SteamOS will outperform Windows 10. So is this something to do with the Star Trek film? No, this is the... Vulkan uh, Vulkan is the, the next iteration of OpenGL. And Android will announce support for Vulkan. They won't have implemented it, but they'll announce support for Vulkan. But iOS will not announce support for Vulkan. What about OS X? Uh, no, I'm being specific about iOS. I know, and I'm asking you about OS, uh, OS X. <laughs> it, uh, it could go either way, but I imagine they probably won't choose to support it because they've only recently adopted Metal, which is what they've traditionally done on iOS. Mm. It would make sense for them to have the same consistent between iOS and mm. OS X, but mm. you know, you never know. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Any others? Uh, yes, uh, this one might sound familiar. Virtual reality will continue to lack adoption, <laughs> 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 and specifically, this will be measured by the fact that there will be no official VR headset products released for the PlayStation Four, the Xbox One, or Steam. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think so you're going to be really... wrong on the Steam one there. Well, it's it's bold, isn't it? But you know, I'm 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 playing the I don't believe virtual reality is going to happen thing. So there okay. we go. So I don't think it's going to be on any of the major platforms. And then okay. my my last one is there will be at least ten consumer products that are not intended for makers and not manufactured by the Raspberry Pi Foundation launched for sale in 2016 that use a Raspberry Pi of any model at its heart. Ooh. Hmm. I, I like okay. that one. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. So there, there's there's your three. Cool. Okay. So, Alan, what do yeah. you predict? I predict that by the end of 2016, there will be 10 mobile devices and by mobile devices, I mean phones or tablets, powered by Ubuntu by the end of 2016. So, so far, I would say there are three. DQE 4.5, E5, and MX4. By the end of 2016. Right, so you mean you mean sort of Ooh, commercially available to purchase? <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Not, not community supported, yeah. but commercially available. Buy it from an online store or some other thing, and it has it pre-installed. Ten of them. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. I predict that during 2016, a major motor manufacturer will announce that they're switching to Ubuntu Snappy Core on their in-car entertainment system and possibly also in their um, the, or the the system that runs the actual car. Okay. The what happens if they do it but they don't announce it? Uh, <laughs> you say announce, but I'm yeah. not convinced that they'll make much of a song and dance about the software they're running on their cars. I think we would probably like to make quite a song and dance about it, and probably try and convince them that they would like to make a song and right. dance. Right. So, I, so are you, is this is this prediction okay, so, hinging on the fact that they announce it or that they do? No, it? it's more that they switch. Right, to they it. do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's more that they do it than they announce right. it. Right. Okay. To me. I will predict that Edward Snowden will leave Russia Ooh. in 2016. Mm. Ooh. And yeah, that's a good Julian one. Assange will leave the Ecuadorian <laughs> embassy in 2016. I think, I think I've got think a lot happening. more chance of the first one yeah. than the second one. No, I think the yeah. second one as well, because there's, there's things afoot there, isn't there, today? Oh, is there? Really? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. 
Oh, okay. How long has so, he been there now? Forever. <laughs> Two years? Years and years. Have you seen how grey he is now? You know, it's yeah. Just, yeah, he's getting old. Um, we're running low <laughs> on time, uh, but we should uh, we should pick out a few. Uh, if you want to have a look through listener predictions, if you each want to pick uh, one or two, and we'll uh, we'll read a few of these out so they're done for the record for for next time. So I'll, okay. I'll grab a couple uh, from the top. Uh, Isaac Carter says Raspberry Pi will release a new model that has built-in Wi-Fi, mm. which yeah. sounds like a good idea to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also says a trend of uh... well, this this was this oh, was this the one. first of a trend of Raspberry Pi based predictions. So there's lots right. of enthusiasm okay. for the pies. Right. Okay. We're low on time, yeah. so let's. Uh, I'm going to go with um, Stephen Bingham says AMD will finish their new Linux graphics drivers, allowing Valve to offer a Linux plus APU based games console that undercuts Microsoft and Sony on price. Oh. Mm. Mm, that's a bold one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Any others? Uh, I like Mr. Young, who says that the fork of Ubuntu 1 will be released, allowing him to drop what Dropbox once and for all. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Be good if it was functionally good. Yeah. 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 Uh, Laura, have you found any? Um, Max says more than 3% of Steam on Linux, more than 3% of Steam on Linux user base on the by the end of 2016 is that three percent of the Steam user base will be on Linux? I think that's what they mean. They they publish official it. platform yeah. statistics, and I can I think it's mm-hmm. currently hovering around just over one percent. So I guess he means that those statistics will go up to three percent. Mm-hmm. And we should probably mention that uh, third world Linux say it will be the year of the Linux desktop. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, every yeah. year, every year. Uh, let's round off with uh, one last one from uh, listener Sternflut who said Red Hat or Sousa will try and create a competitor for Snappy and Sousa will be sold once again <laughs> <laughs> who wants Sousa now? Uh, attach me wasn't it? no info Still? focus no, isn't it? it micro it's focus UK... that's the one well that's uh, something to look forward to over the coming year and we'll come back to these in a year's time and uh, and see how many of yours and our predictions were correct. Excellent. And now, for the last time this year, Command Line Love. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feel a bit uh, and, out. Oh, hang on. There's a, there's a special... Um, oh, that doesn't work. Oh. No. Oh, Samantha's just not... <laughs> <it. laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and this year, uh, this, this Command Line Love um, is exif tool dash all equals... Oh dear, I'm not going to read that out. But basically, it removes all of the metata- metadata tag information from an image if you want to do that for some reason. Why do you want to do that, Alan? Mm. Uh, I was diffing images using diff to see the difference between two images. And it turns out you could create two images which are identical using image magic, like convert a JPEG to a PNG yeah. and then convert the same JPEG yeah. to another PNG, diff those two files, and they differ. Because of the metadata. Because- because it puts metadata in that says how many pixels per second it took to encode oh. the PNG. <laughs> what? Uh, Why did other you stuff ever need to there, know that? Exactly. I did not need to know that. I wanted to diff the images. Now, I know Image Magic has a compare tool as well, but I just wanted to diff them because it was fast. Just, I just wanted to diff them, and that annoyed me. Just out of interest, if you were doing that conversion of the same image to the same image, why did you need to diff them? Uh, so I wasn't. That was my test to see if it if it was convert adding the metadata in. Oh, okay. I actually wanted to diff two different images, but I couldn't see how they were different. Right. I couldn't see you could only see if they were different. So to, yes, okay. to prove it, I took one base image and converted it twice and then tried to diff those two new conversions and they were different, right. which is what threw me. Okay. And then I found that this exif... To, but actually convert has a strip option which is supposed to strip the metadata, but it doesn't strip that metadata. Oh, did you file a bug? some of it. Not yet. I ranted on Twitter instead, which is amount to much the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good. We love getting your feedback, so please send it to us. Even the pointlessly mean stuff makes us laugh. 
If it's short, tweet us on at Ubuntu Podcast. If it's less short, but please no essays, email us on show at ubuntupodcast.org. If you'd like to discuss some of the things we talk about with other listeners, post on our shiny new subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Ubuntu Podcast. Or you can just leave a comment on the relevant show notes on our website, ubuntupodcast.org. So here it is, it's your feedback. Stephen Baker from Australia emailed us on show at ubuntupodcast.org. A change in roles at work has put me into a position where I'm required to work on Linux systems instead of Windows day to day. I was sent on the Red Hat Administrators course and I've gradually come to realise what a powerful and useful operating system Linux really is. And so now I want to learn how to use it to its full potential. So I've installed Ubuntu on my desktop and I began to look online for how many, for as many how-to guides as I could. Um, and then I came across the Ubuntu podcast, which I found very entertaining and useful. Oh, that's very kind of you, Stephen. Well, I wouldn't take uh, sysadmin advice from us. No. <laughs> what I found interesting was, uh, you know, he's uh, using uh, Red Hat, you know, administrator's course, and then he says he wants to learn how to use it to its full potential, so he installs Ubuntu. Of course. I like that. Yes. yes. That's your silver cloud right there. Uh, Brian Walton emailed. Sorry if I'm starting to sound like I only care about the audio quality. It's not true. It's just that when you occasionally have problems, they stand out. You played some interviews recorded at OddCamp. The first had some interesting audio artifacts where the audio seemed to echo and filter and alias. I was wondering what caused that. Figuring out how figuring out the cause might be beneficial to someone intending to make similar location recordings. It's quite possible the effect was aggravated by multiple audio data compression algorithms. I guess there was data compression during, used during recording and again during podcast encoding. Maybe during editing too? I listened to the OG version. It sounds like reverb from the original recording being encoded poorly and that closer miking may have helped. Trying to be more positive in my feedback. Well, thank I really you. really appreciate it, Brian. Thank I really do. Uh, basically, <laughs> I, I can tell you exactly what that was if you're interested. That was um, people in the background who were talking while I was recording and uh, I was recording on my phone um, and I basically did noise removal in Audacity, which made it so that you couldn't hear what they were saying, but they still sounded like they were going in the background <laughs> so so brian could you please come to the next dog camp we'll uh, recruit you uh, <laughs> as audio um engineer for the weekend and you can help right all of our wrongs we'll be uh, glad for some uh, consultancy <laughs> especially if you've got better should... equipment than we do yeah especially I, if you've got I better should... equipment <laughs> As long as it's um, listenable, I actually quite like the artifacts in on location recordings like that because we are doing it in a room full of people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is true. Yeah, that's why I didn't yeah, worry too I much about it. I kind of long for the interviews recorded outside a bathroom. Those, yeah. those from those heady days yeah. of the early episodes. <laughs> I liked those. Yeah, you were so much the bathroom, and... but you know, <laughs> yeah. Jean Christophe Noir emailed. Thank you from France for this very nice Linux podcast. It's always a pleasure to listen to your shows. Just to tell you that your show feeds got broken recently, OG and MP3. The podcast title is empty. Could you fix it? It causes weird behaviours with podcatchers. You figured out what this is, didn't you, Martin? I did, yeah. So uh, I was just doing a bit of admin on the server today and there was a new PowerPress update. And PowerPress 6.3 has reference to fixed a bug with podcast titles not displaying in some situations when WordPress versions older than 4.4 are used. And I think we had a brief period where we had the newer version of PowerPress and we hadn't got the WordPress update. So right. I think uh, one or two podcasts have been affected, but I've done the updates last week, so we should be good now. So PowerPress is the WordPress plugin we use for making our podcast feeds. Yes, yes, yes. That does our podcast feeds, yeah. Cool. Uh, Jonath Aridi commented on Google+. Plus. Very enjoyable as always. I tried, I tried to join the Telegram group you mentioned, but the link has apparently expired. Blame Ingrid. They're, so uh. one of the problems with Telegram groups, uh, they're like IRC channels, but they don't have the same admin um, tools. So you, Telegram doesn't have the ability to ban people. Not that we would ban you, Jarlath, of course, but other undesirables have come in and started spamming and we kicked them out. But there's no easy way that I've figured 
uh, on either the mobile or the desktop client in Telegram to keep them out. Um, and if your invite link to join the channel is public, which I think we've published uh, published elsewhere, then anyone can join that, including spammers, as well as all our lovely, lovely listeners. Um, we'll have to rethink how we do this, mm. I think. Mm. And lastly, the Tech Shed podcast tagged us on Google+. We just did a thousand downloads today. Thank you, everyone. And a special thanks to the Ubuntu podcast for the mention in episode 40. Oh, my cron job worked then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are they are they crediting us for them having a thousand downloads? Are we the slash dot of Linux podcasts? Apparently, apparently, let's just believe <laughs> what, that and carry on. The one on. that nobody reads <laughs> is that what you mean by the slash dot. <laughs> well, you know, in nineteen ninety nine. Yes, I'm, I'm talking in the in terms of being slash dotted. We're the Uber of okay. podcasts. <laughs> what you ring us up and we'll talk to you yeah. half an hour. I have no idea, but <laughs> it's just like up? the thing to say. <laughs> Let's just hope <laughs> Joe Ressington doesn't hear that bit. He might have something to say about that, but there we go. I think the uh, jet lag is kicking in, Laura, yeah. after a week. Yeah. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> Please stop doing Who that. Who is that? It's terrifying. <laughs> Let's move on. And that's all for episode 42, and that's it for season 8. Wow. Uh, we'll be going f- yeah, we'll be going for curry in 2016 to decide whether we'll be back for a new season. And because we like eating curry. Yeah, mainly, <laughs> mainly because well, we like eating curry. Uh, we're going to yeah. have to figure out like when we're going like, to look back on these predictions. So I think if, if we do nothing else, we'll have one episode at the very end of the year. Just us <laughs> eating curry th- and slagging off our predictions from the previous year. Yeah, maybe 39 yeah. episodes before that. Yes. Well. Thank you, everyone, mm. for listening. Yes, um, if you're, if you're yeah, bored, yeah. we've got eight seasons to listen to as a back catalogue, so uh, enjoy those. <laughs> See you later. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. So, um, do we get to go for a curry now? Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. I knew it was in there somewhere. <laughs>